Alrighty, well, welcome everybody and thank you for joining us today. My name is Andrew Dauphiny and I'm the Instruction and Outreach Librarian at the New Jersey State Library. And our colleague is, my colleague is also on the line, Regina Fitzpatrick, who is our genealogy librarian, who has so graciously uh, worked hard to, uh, to get these wonderful ladies from the Alpha Kappa Alpha Epsilon Upsilon Omega chapter to agree to present for us today in honor of Juneteenth. Um, before we jump into the program, just a few housekeeping items to go over. Uh, first and foremost, we will be taking your questions at the end of the program today, but please, you can ask them at any time using the Q&A button, using the chat button. Um, we'll be happy to, to answer them, or if you want, you can email me and my email address is on the screen there. Um, at there is a survey that will be available at the end of the webinar, as well as in a follow-up email. We always ask if you have time to please complete the survey. We really want to hear what you have to say about our programming, and it really does help us as we move forward. If you're looking for more information about the local chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha, you can visit their website at www epsilon upsilon omega.org um, and you could find information about a lot of the programs that they do a lot of their outreach some history and all of that so um, i encourage you if you have some time um, to go ahead and look at that well, one last thing before we jump in um, just a quick overview of the zoom dashboard in case some of you might not be familiar with that um, if you are using a laptop desktop, whether it's Mac or PC, this is what your dashboard should look like. Um, it may look a little different if you're using a mobile device, but uh, all the features will still be there. Um, at any point, if you're having issues with your audio, always check this audio settings at the bottom left corner, make sure that it's actually connected to your speakers. Um, if not, you can always try logging out and logging back in and so most of the time that will fix it. Um, but uh, you can always check your settings there. Um, if you have any problems at all and you're trying to figure something out, you can use the raise hand button and that will alert me and I will get in contact with you and hopefully to be able to solve any of your problems. And as I mentioned before, if you have any questions that you want to ask or if you want to share anything with our panelists, um, you can use the Q&A button or the chat button. Just type that in um, and we'll be happy to, to address them. So that is everything that I have for you. So I'm going to turn it over to Adrian to do a little bit of an introduction. Thank you, Andrew. And good afternoon to everyone that is assembled with us today. I want to first thank Andrew and Regina for extending this invitation to the ladies of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated Epsilon Upsilon Omega chapter we truly appreciate you giving us the opportunity to be able to share a little bit of information about us as a national organization and as the first and finest chapter here in the city of Trenton. We hope that each and every one of you find the information interesting and we thank you. And I thank also all of the ladies of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority for taking time out of your schedule today to be a part of this program. And last but not least, I would like to say to each and every one of us, let's celebrate Juneteenth and as they make it a national holiday, as we do for Dr. King, let's use it as a day on and not a day off. Thank you. The mission of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated was found on a mission of five tenets that have remained unchanged since the sorority's inception more than a century ago. AKA's mission is to cultivate and encourage high scholastic and ethical standards, to promote unity and friendship among college women, to study and help alleviate problems concerning girls and women in order to improve their social stature to maintain a progressive interest in college life and be of service to all mankind. The small group of women who found AKA sorority at the turn of the last century were conscious of their privileged position as college trained women of color, just one generation removed from slavery. At the same time, they were sensitive to the needs and struggles of the less fortunate and underserved communities in their hometown and in other environs beyond their travels who were in need of goods, services, and opportunities beyond their reach. 
The Young Collegian's commitment to scholarship, leadership, civic engagement, and public service woven together by the bonds of lifelong sisterhood formed the bedrock of the rich legacy of servant leadership that epitomizes the sorority of this day. A global reach of its programs labors are focused on the health, wealth, family, education, human rights, and parity issues that concern its constituents ensures the relevance of the organization into perpetuity. The motto, by merit, by culture. The colors, salmon pink and apple green, best markers of femininity and everlasting life. And the symbol, the ivy leaf, strength and endurance. And the first president, Ethel Hedgeman Lyle. The history. Howard University's co-ed Ethel Hedgeman dreamed of creating a support network for women with like minds coming together for mutual uplift and coalescing their talents and strengths for the benefits of others. In 1908, her vision crystallized as Alpha Kappa Alpha, the first Negro Greek letter sorority. Five years later, in 1913, the lead incorporator, Nellie Quander, ensured Alpha Kappa Alpha's perpetuity through incorporation in the District of Columbia. Together with eight other co-eds at the Mecca of Negro Education, Hedgeman crafted a design that not only fostered interaction, stimulation, and ethical growth among members, but also provided hope for the masses. Because they believed that Negro women represented the highest, more education, more enlightenment, and more of almost everything that the great masses of Negroes never had. Hedgeman and her cohorts worked to honor what she called an everlasting debt to raise Negroes up and to make them better. For more than a century, the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sisterhood has filled that obligation by becoming an indomitable force for their good in their communities, state, nation, and the world. Today, the AKA program still reflects the communal consciousness steeped in the AKA tradition and embodied in AKA's creed to be supreme in service to all mankind. Cultural awareness and social advocacy marked AKA's infancy, but within one year and in 1914 of acquiring corporate status, AKA had also made its mark on education, establishing a scholarship award. Through the years, AKA has used the sisterhood as a grand lever to raise the status of African Americans, particularly girls and women. AKA has enriched minds and encouraged lifelong learning and works collaboratively with other groups to maximize outreach. Hi, we're going to be talking to you about the history of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated and about Epsilon Upsilon Omega Chapter Trenton, New Jersey. My name is Angela Dodson. With me is Alicia Malone. Alicia, how did Alpha Kappa Alpha come to be founded? So, if I can give you just a little bit of context for people who may not know um, how sororities and fraternities are. So, you're thinking back to 1700s, 1800s, there are quite a few predominantly white institutions that have been formed and created but at that time, they're not taking African-American students. So in the early 1800s, you have the first HBCU, which is Historically Black College and University, that's founded, where, because we had to start getting organizations, we had to start getting institutions where we could 
educate our own because we couldn't get into these predominantly white institutions. So at the predominantly white institutions, back at that point, you still had men and women who, you know, of white descent who were on these campuses, but I'm sure that there were probably way more men than there were women, even of white women who were on there. So they had established sororities which are groups of women who are like-minded to come together to support each other on these campuses, which I'm sure were predominantly male. So fast forward to 1900s, early 1900s. And in 1908, Alpha Kappa Alpha, we have Howard University, and we have Ethel Hedgeman, who later became Ethel Hedgeman Lyle, um, was on Howard University's campus, which is an HBCU. And so same thing. I'm sure there were lots of male students, but there were probably only a handful of female students. And so she thought of the idea of having a sorority, a black sorority, African-American sorority, on the campus of Howard University. So that's how the idea came to be, because there were sororities, but there were none for African-Americans at that time. And how did she form this uh, sorority? So she uh, went to the administration. And she, had, she got a group of, of young ladies, it was eight other young ladies besides herself who she knew on the campus, and spoke of this organization that she had you know, kind of conceptualized to have on the campus. And so her and these eight other young ladies got together and put together you know, the name and the colors and the motto and the bylaws and how they wanted this organization to be formed. And they took this to the campus administration. And they told the campus administration basically, we want a sisterhood. We want to be able to support each other on this campus. And so it was accepted. And so in uh, January 15th of 1908, Alpha Kappa Alpha came to be based on the ideas of these young ladies. Excellent. Now at one point, this sorority was challenged from within. Um, could you talk about that? Yes. So the. Uh, original eight women that, the original nine women rather, that started the organization, they invited eight additional women because at the time it was January of 1908 and in the spring more than half of those ladies were graduating because they were seniors. So they invited a group of young ladies who were sophomores so that they could continue the legacy of this organization on the campus and then you know those sophomores could bring in more you know as they learned about the organization they could, you know, perpetuate the organization on the university. So as they graduated and new members were brought into the organization, there was a group of young ladies, this was after the founders had graduated, that came on and joined the organization. But then they decided, we want to be a part of a sorority, but we don't really like the way that the sorority is built. We don't, want, we don't like the name, we don't like the colors, we don't like the motto. We're going, we're going to keep the sorority concept, but we're going to change it to the way that we want. And one of the ladies who had graduated came back on campus just to see how things were going. And she kind of got, her name was Nellie Quander. She got wind of this, you know, she went to one of the meetings to see what was going on. And she kind of heard what was going on, that they were trying to change what had been founded you know, several years before. And so, you know, her initial, you know, thought process was, wait a minute, wait, no. You know, the founders, this was founded in a certain way and this is the way we plan to keep it. And so Nellie Quander, and she had a group of young ladies as well who were called the incorporators, decided that they wanted to um, move forward with incorporating the sorority so that it could remain the way that it was initially put together and that it couldn't be, and that they could also move on to other um, institutions around the country. They could, it wasn't just for Howard University, but they could move their organization to different uh, universities around the country. Why was this incorporation important, and how did that allow them to spread to other places? So, by them incorporating themselves, it allowed them, it gave them the authority to not only have this organization on Howard University's campus, but it gave them the authority to be able to expand and create new chapters uh, at other universities around the United States. And so that was important because one, it gave them, it, it made it where those 
who came in after the founders were gone and new members that came in did not have the authority to change the name and the model and things like that and it gave them the opportunity to expand. So from that moment forward, it became known as Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Excellent. Thank you, Alicia. Our member Kelly Griffin is going to share some information with us about membership in Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. Other than becoming a member as an undergraduate or as a graduate, as you described, is there another way to become a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated? Yes, uh, we, uh, you can be initiated through an honorary membership. Uh, you're actually chosen. You are a woman who has reached a certain level of distinction out in the world, whether it's in politics, STEM, uh, medical, uh, things of that nature. Um, you are chosen by a chapter, as I stated, and then once that process takes place, then your name is submitted to the international level, and they vote you in. And at this time, there's 140 honorary members of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Uh, for example, I'll just name a few for you. Um, we have Maya Angelou, famous poet. Uh, we have a uh, filmmaker, Ava DuVernay. We have the actual, uh, her name is Judy Smith. She was the original Olivia Pope. Uh, she, her, the show Scandal was based on her. Um, we have Mae Jemison. She was the first African-American female astronaut. We have Coretta Scott King, as we all know, famous civil rights leader, the wife of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We have Eleanor Roosevelt. She's a former first lady. Um, she was definitely a human rights advocate, and, and she's done a lot in her own right. And Melanie Hobson, we have, um, we have Intazaki Shange. She was actually nominated by Epsilon Upsilon Omega Chapter. Her mother was a charter member, and her name was Eloise Williams. I could go on and on, but those are just a few. Okay. Tell us some of the famous members, uh, regular or uh, honorary, who particularly inspire you and, and why. Yes, I actually have two. Um, the incorporator, Nellie Conder. As my dear sister Alicia just spoke about so eloquently, uh, she was a smart cookie. She really was. And she saved us. She saved the sorority by what she did. And had she not have been at that meeting, who knows where we would have been. So I, myself, am very thankful and indebted to her and her fortitude. Um, and I also want to talk about, um, she may not be known to a lot, but she's, she's known to me. And her name is Ernestine Whitehead. Um, she passed away. She's a member of the sorority. She was my high school cheerleading coach. Mm -hmm. And she was just such an inspiration to myself and other African American young ladies growing up in high school. And she said to me, she saw in me the qualities of Alpha Cap Alpha Woman. And she said to me, Kelly, I want you to go to an HBCU. I want you to get back here wearing some pink and green, which are the lovely colors of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, and I want you to work hard in this community. And I feel like I did just that to make her proud. Great. And you also mentioned our vice president, and she became a member yes. as an undergraduate at Howard. What does it mean for us as a sorority to have a woman of our membership in the White House, essentially, or at the at the heartbeat away from the president? It is everything. It means so much to us to see a woman of color, an HBCU graduate, an attorney, a former attorney general, someone that looks like us, be at the top level. The, the, it, it's just, I can't put it into words how proud I am every time I see her, you know, representing us out there for the world to see. It is an amazing feeling, and I know that my sorority sisters feel the same way. I'm sure they do. Thank you very much, Kelly Griffin. You're welcome, my pleasure. Sherry Yuri Washington has joined us to talk about how vast this sorority is. Sherry, could you tell us how many members and how many chapters there are in Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated? Certainly, Angela. You know, I love talking about Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. There are over 300,000 financial active members within Alpha Kappa Alpha. We have over a thousand undergrad and graduate chapters. And what's interesting about that is that um, they're all through the United States as well as international. 
and the, the membership is, is international. You have chapters all over the world. We have chapters all over the world, and I believe our last chapter that was chartered was in Dubai. Could you talk about how Alpha Kappa Alpha is structured? Oh, such a great question. So, of course, we're international, but within the United States, there are 10 regions. And the, um, the first region is the North Atlantic region, which is where Epsilon Upsilon Omega is located. And that particular region spans from Maine all the way to Washington, D.C. And now that I've mentioned Epsilon Upsilon Omega, I just have to put a plug in for my, for my chapter. We are 80 strong. And in New Jersey, we are the second oldest chapter. We're 69 years young. Excellent. What about meetings? Are there regional meetings and national meetings? And how are they held? So interesting because every two years we have a boule, which is a national conference. And we have, we've been to Nashville, Tennessee, we've been to California, we've been to Florida. And because our conferences are so large now, we're really limited to only five places in the United States that can house us. On a regional level, we have a conference every year. And next year, we will be in Baltimore, Maryland. And the national, where, where are some of the places it can be in? So we've been in Philadelphia, we've mm -hmm. been in Houston, we are in Florida, as well as California. Okay. Thank you very much. You, you're so welcome. Sherry Erie, Washington, thank you. Joining me is Tanya Stewart, who is the program chair for Epsilon Upsilon Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Alpha Kappa Alpha is an international world. Organization, and I assume that there are international programs and initiatives that you carry out. Could you talk about some of that? Absolutely, Angela. Thank you very much. Under our current international president of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Dr. Glenda Gover, we have a theme for 2018-2022, which, which she has entitled Exemplifying Excellence Through Sustainable Service. She calls it more than just a theme. It is our call to action. It is our call to service. The time is now, the needs are great, and the opportunities are plentiful within our communities. We have five key target areas. HC, HBCU for our historically black colleges and universities. We make donations and support those institutions. We have women's health care and wellness, along with an economic legacy program we are dealing with the arts, with emphasis on the Harlem Renaissance, and also global impact, working with individuals from other countries. Great. What are some of the things that Epsilon Upsilon Omega chapter is doing specifically to carry out these programs? Absolutely. Epsilon Upsilon Omega is very active in supporting various new um, programs um, emphasizing the five targets that I mentioned to you. We um, <clears throat> deal with the arts currently. Our members have um, a program which we call, we've entitled The Art of Storytelling, in which members of the chapter have selected children's books and they have taken the time to record the, themselves to allow those readings to be distributed to the various children within the um, school district here in Mercer County. And law is being placed on our website where during the summer months, teachers um, who are teaching during the summer will have access to those um, different stories to share with their class. We also have um, members who have established a program um, which they've entitled African American Female Composers. And they had did research where they were able to um, identify several female comp um, classical composers, and they presented um, a presentation to some high school students to give them the information that some of them don't obtain during their school year. Um, with our economic legacy, uh, we increase financial awareness within our community. With legal workshops, we just um, partnered with the American Association of Black Female Attorneys, and we did a, um, we partnered with them, and there was a, um, a webinar dealing with guardianship, and we're going to be having one on the end of the month dealing with wills. 
Um, we also, in addition, have the Women's Health Care and Wellness, where we deal with Alzheimer Caregivers Program and Breast Cancer Awareness. During the Breast Cancer Awareness, we take off our pink and we put on our red, where at that time we are working to um, make a um, heart awareness in our community, dealing with um, changes in our lifestyle, and informing the public on the issues dealing with the heart. And with our HBCU support and donations, we have several members in our chapters who are um, alumni of historically black colleges and universities. And those members have financially supported those schools and have adopted those um, different universities. In addition, we support college tours that they may have, homecomings, and other achievements. And in addition to that, we have our Global Impact, where we um, work with international organizations such as Souls to Souls and the Lions International. And just recently, we partnered with Lion Internationals and an eyeglass recycling program where we collected over 200 pairs of used eyeglasses, which will be used to help those who, are, who have um, deficiency with their, their, their um, vision. <clears throat> what is Souls to Souls? Souls to Souls is an organization, an international organization, where gently used shoes are donated and distributed throughout the country and throughout the world for those who are less fortunate. Great. Could you say the theme again? The theme for 2018-2022, it exemplifying excellence through sustainable services. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Time to do it. We have Sherry Yuri Washington back with us to talk about the chartering of Epsilon Upsilon Omega chapter. Could you tell, talk to us about how this chapter began? Oh, thank you for that. Epsilon Upsilon Omega was chartered on Sunday, March the 8th, 1952, by 18 visionary women in a ceremony that was held at the Stacy Trent Hotel, downtown Trenton. Epsilon Upsilon Omega was the 140th chapter chartered and the second, as I mentioned previously, in graduate, chapter, yes. graduate chapter in New Jersey. The chartering was led by President Daisy Morgan. Mm -hmm. There was a public ceremony held at Shiloh Baptist Church in Trenton. In attendance, aside from the chartering members, there were officers. Our first officer and vice president was Christine Shack. Treasurer was Thelma Good. Secretary was Mignon Shepard. Assistant Secretary was Catherine Solomon. And our Ivy Leaf reporter was, Kat, was Helen Jackson Lee. Excellent. Who were the charter members? Our charter members were Edith Dent, Shirley Pendle, Catherine Solomon, Ethel Price, Bernice Muntz, Amy Bailey, Sadie Dickerson, Daisy Morgan, Christine Shack, Betty Vaughn Coles, Mignon Shepard, Thelma Good, Lottie Dinkins, Eloise Williams, Madeline McGruder, Helen Jackson Lee, Ruby Marshall, and Edna Henry Lewis. Who are some of the charter members that you knew personally? Yeah, I knew quite a few of them. Um, I knew Daisy Morgan. She was an educator in the Trenton School District. I knew Betty Vaughn Coles, very, very dear to me. She was the first black um, educator at Junior Number no. 1 in Trenton, New Jersey. An excellent cook, famous for her pound cake, her chicken salad. Um, she was just such a wonderful person. I was also in the bronzettes with her. And she left a daughter and a granddaughter who are also members of Alpha Kappa Alpha. I knew Helen Jackson Lee. She also left a legacy who is currently in our chapter. That's Barbara Lee. And she was an author and well-renowned. And Ruby Marshall. Her husband actually attended Howard University with my mother. And I knew her as well. I also knew Betty Cole through the chapter mostly, and she went to West Virginia State College. She took a liking to me because I was from West Virginia. <laughs> and she had studied, I believe, home ec? She was a home economics teacher Excellent. as well, yes, yes. I also knew uh, Helen Jackson Lee through my church, the former Our Lady of Divine Shepherd. Yes. And uh, she was a writer, so I took to her as well. Uh, yes, um, yes. You know, these visionary women, 
who they established a sisterhood for Epsilon Upsilon Omega that we have continued for the 69 years that we've been in existence. They've worked hard at establishing a legacy and providing meaningful programs meeting the needs of the Mercer County area. The one thing that I failed to mention to you is that Lottie Dinkins was so special and she was so gifted and, and creative that she wrote the song, our chapter song, Sisters United, There's Nothing We Can't Do. Was she related to Mayor David Dinkins of New York? Yes, yeah, she was his stepmother and she inspired him to go to college, which was a, a pivoting moment for him to get into politics. Excellent. Are any of these charter members still living? We lost our last charter member this year. That was Shirley Pendle. She passed away February 2021. Thank you. Sherry Uri Washington has been sharing with us about the charter members of Epsilon, Upsilon, Omega Chapter, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Thank, Thank you, Sherry. You. Thank you. Darlene Mency is joining us and she's going to talk about some of the history of the chapter. Tell us about some of the interesting programs and initiatives that the chapter has carried out from the 1950s through the 1990s. Thank you. Yes, I think the most interesting activity that we did was in 1976, uh, New Jersey and the nation celebrated the bicentennial. And our chapter was the first African American chapter to accept the invitation from the Bicentennial Commission to participate. Our chapter received $5,000 to write and produce a musical drama entitled The Unfinished Revolution. The play was co-authored by Lottie Lee Dinkins and Helen Jackson Lee. On Sunday, March 9, 1975, the production was given at the War Memorial Building with over 2,000 people in attendance. The next amazing story was when we attended the History Making Day on August 25th, 1963, some of our members of the sorority and high school students, I being one of them, a junior in high school, joined the March on Washington where Dr. Martin Luther King spoke the words that resounded around the world in his speech, I Have a Dream. We were so glad we went to Washington. I'm so glad I was there singing glory, hallelujah, we shall overcome. I will never forget that day. It was so exciting and it would be remembered in my heart forever. You talked about the heat that day. Could you talk about that? Oh yes, it was over 100 degrees that day and we pulled off our sandals, our shoes, and we put our feet in the reflection pool. And you could see everyone lined up uh, at, at the at reflection pool. It was really, really just scorching hot that day. But we remember Martin Luther King's speech and Mahalia Jackson singing. It was just something that you will carry with you forever. Excellent. One of the programs that uh, started during this period was the Martin Luther King uh, holiday breakfast. Yes. Could you talk about that a little bit? It has become the largest, one of the largest, if not the largest activities in our county, certainly possibly in South Jersey for Martin Luther King Day. How did, does the sorority accomplish this? Okay, it was started in the 1980s and we started out with the Frontiers International, a men's club here in Trenton. And it started out small. No one had ever done this before. And we, our first program was at Shiloh Baptist Church. And then later we grew and we began to have it at other hotels. And we celebrated our 40th year this year. And it was amazing because we, in the past we've always had over 600 people attended. And there are only a few hotels in Trenton or in the surrounding Princeton area that can hold that many people. And people come from all over to attend our breakfast. Uh, it is sponsored by the Ivy Leaf Educational uh, Foundation. And we- Which is an arm of the sorority or affiliated with the sorority. Yes, and, um, and we provide scholarships 
for high school students. And it's really served its purpose. I mean, it's one. It's a wonderful program. Mm -hmm. I should say it's a, a separate charitable and yeah, entity a, that right. uh, is associated with the sort. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And that this year's program was virtual, is that correct? Yes, it's the first time we had a virtual program. And it was well attended virtually. And our speaker was uh, Reverend Neighbors uh, from Chicago. Good. Mm -hmm. Are there any other activities during that period that you'd like to mention? There are just so many things that we do. Um, you know, for the students around, the, we have a, a teenage uh, program called ha Hashtag Cap, uh, Gap. And someone will be talking about that, Hashtag Cap. And we do a lot of, uh, it, you know, programs with students, introducing them to uh, scholarships and telling them about colleges and universities. And um, we take them on tours of historical places around the United States. So it's, it's very good. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you, darling. Thank right. you for sharing with us. Thank you very much. We are honored to have with us Adrian King who's the current president of Epsilon Upsilon Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. And she's a former president of the foundation affiliated with our chapter. When was the foundation started and how does it fit in with the sorority? Thank you, Angela. Our foundation actually began in 2002, which also was the year that we celebrated our 50th anniversary as a chapter. Our foundation, when it first began, it began under the name of Epsilon Upsilon Omega Foundation. And now it is currently known as the Ivy League Educational Foundation. We are a 501c3, and our foundation was founded to provide scholarships to high school students throughout Mercer County and its surrounding areas. So we originally began with our scholarships with the chapter hosting the Dr. Martin Luther King Junior Scholarship Breakfast, and then it was moved to our foundation to be able to support our efforts in providing finances to deserving students here in Mercer County. Excellent. Are there other activities that the foundation carries out? Yes, there are. Actually, we have two signature programs that we do. One is Designer Bag Bingo, which we host every year, and because of COVID, we were not afforded to be able to do it in 2020. But in previous years, it has been a sold out event where we host over 300 people that come out to support us. In addition, we also hosted the first ever en blanc on the city, on the steps of the War Memorial Building here in Trenton, New Jersey. And that also was the first that was ever brought here to New Jersey. And what is en blanc? En blanc is the all white affair that actually originated in Paris and we were the first to bring it here to the city of Trenton. Excellent. What are some of the um, other projects and events of the last couple of decades that the ch uh, chapter has carried out? So we've had the opportunity of hosting the first ever Hattitude event in the city of Trenton. We actually held it at the Westin and also the Hyatt uh, in Princeton but it was through our chapter and it was to celebrate mothers and women and we used it to continue the legacy of the bronzettes mm -hmm. who are no longer in existence so we thought that it would be something that would allow for us to continue in their footsteps as inspirational women and many of our members of our sorority were a part of the bronzettes mm -hmm. so we thought it fitting to be able to continue to celebrate them. And they previously held the Mother's Day event, is that correct? That's you're... correct, yes. Okay. And what is Hattitudes exactly? To talk about that? So we've put a twist on it where it's a day for women to dress up, come out in their beautiful hats. We had vendors that would come and uh, sell their hats as well. But we also hosted a fashion show. So members of our sorority, as well as uh, family members and friends, participated in our fashion shows. And it was an opportunity for them to be able to display the hats that many of our vendors had. Excellent. And what are some of the other projects and events that uh, stand out over that period? And previous years, we've also uh, hosted March Madness. That was an opportunity for us to engage the community. And that takes place during uh, the March 
season for basketball for NCAA took place. How has COVID-19 affected the sorority and the chapter operations? So COVID-19, believe it or not, Angela, I like to look at the glass half full and not half empty. Because although COVID has had an effect on us as a chapter, it has also served us in a good way. And what I mean by that is, uh, thank God none of our members succumbed to COVID. Uh, several members may have contracted it. But we were blessed to have one of our members who works for the Trenton Health Team to partner with us to help get many of our members vaccinated, as well as for us to help get out the word to the community about the importance of be, being vaccinated. It has forced us to now host our events over a virtual environment because we're no longer able to meet in person, as well as our meetings. So we're now meeting in a virtual environment and we are unable to meet in person. However, it allows for us still to engage the community and engage our sisterhood. And we have our sister relations committee who does an outstanding job in keeping us as a sorority engaged. And also our program committee who does an outstanding job in keeping not just our members, but also the community engaged. Does the fact that you have to go virtual make the sorority more technically savvy? Well, I'm glad you asked that. It has opened our eyes and has also strengthened us to be able to do more than we could imagine we could do. Not only are our uh, young sorority sisters teaching our more seasoned sorority sisters we have the um, luxury of having what we call the PGP technical team, and that stands for Pretty Girls Production. And because of them, they have actually partnered our members and what they call them as tech buddies. So allowing them to be able to lean on the shield and lean on other members for their needs in this technical uh, virtual environment. Excellent. Thank you very much to Adrian King, our chapter president for Epsilon Upsilon Omega Chapter, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Thank you, Angela. We have with us Jerry Yuri, who's going to talk about some of the past presidents of Epsilon Upsilon Omega Chapter. Jerry, when did you serve as president and what are some of the highlights of your terms? Thank you, Angela. I have lovingly served this chapter for eight years, two four-year terms, um, making me the longest serving president in the history of this chapter. I, I was the 20th and the 24th president. Uh, my first term was from 1995 to 1998. And what I remember most about that term was that we, um, we received the grant from the National the Educational Advancement Foundation. And at that time, one of the national things was partnership in math and science. So we used that grant to provide for three training programs that we had for the Trenton Public School System where we taught the parents how to teach their children about math and science. I also remember we had a bone marrow donor drive, which was very unusual at that time. There were many blood drives, but bone marrow drive was something that was unique and we received a lot of accolades from American Red Cross for that drive. And one of the other highlights was that we initiated 10 new members at that time and one of the members is our current president, Adrian King, and one of the other members happens to be the first black woman, congresswoman from the state of New Jersey, Bonnie Watson Coleman. And But the most important thing I remember was the 95th a birthday celebration of Susie Waxwood. And that was important because everyone came together to help celebrate that wonderful occasion for her. Now my second term was 2009 to 2012. And what I remember most about that term was that we celebrated our 60th chapter anniversary. And what I remember most about it was everyone was in Trenton having a good time partying and I think Senator Menendez was there. But I happened to be at work, working on contract negotiations and couldn't even be there. In New York. In New York. So I really remember that. 
But both of my terms, I just I just love serving the chapter because this is such a, a great, a wonderful chapter to lead. Great. Who are some of the um, past presidents of the chapter that you knew personally? You know, we have had 24 past uh, presidents, and I have known all of them except maybe two. But you really couldn't grow up in the city of Trenton and not know many of these people because they were wonderful educators, well known for trying to instill, instill a good education in our students. So everyone knew Daisy Morgan, everyone knew uh, Thelma Good, everyone knew these uh, Edie Boone, Gloria Gibson. They were all educators, uh, principals. So everyone knew those people and I think they inspired me and many people that I know to want to become Alpha Kappa Alpha women because they were such amazing, elegant, and awesome women. Are there any that really stand out as having had an influence on you personally? Well, again, I'm going to go back to Susie Waxwood. Susie Waxwood, um, she was initiated at Howard University in 1926. So she was there when many of the original founders were there. And she would always tell the story about how Dean Lucy Slow would say to her, an Alpha Kappa Alpha woman never says she can't do anything. And that was one of the one of the important messages about being a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority, that you know there may be times where we may not be ready, we may not think we're ready, but we should be ready. And I also remember fondly uh, Betty Vaughn Coles. She was a good family friend, and was one of our charter members, and remained an active member of our chapter throughout her life. And then we have other people such as um, Barbara Anderson. She was uh, one of the first black female assistant commissioners of education. We had a lot of women who were first. Uh, Elizabeth Bates, she was the first female principal of Trenton, Trenton Central High School. Um, we had my good friend Shirley Tyler. She was the first black female warden, Mercer County Correction Center. Um, and of course, I wouldn't be able to leave anywhere or leave leave this place if I didn't mention my very own sister, Sherry Yuri Washington, um, who was became, a, even though she's younger than me, she became a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority before me, and so she was someone who inspired me. But these were all wonderful women who have been inspirational, not just to me, but for everyone who lives in the community of Trenton. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry Yuri. Thank you. Adrian King, where can people go to get more information about the anniversary activities for Epsilon Upsilon Omega Chapter? Well, they definitely can visit our website, www.epsilonupsilonomega.org. There, not only will they find out about the things that we're doing for our upcoming anniversary, but it will also show them all of the events that we've had thus far and all of our upcoming events as we look forward and lead into celebrating our 70 years as a chapter. As president of Epsilon Upsilon Omega chapter, we have been a, an award-winning chapter. Could you tell us about some of the awards that the chapter has won? Absolutely. And I am proud to say that I was an active member during these award-winning days. So we've been an award-winning chapter as far back as 2010. And some of the events that we've hosted that allow for us to qualify as an award-winning chapter was in health fair that we organized and hosted, as well as our social justice for domestic violence programs that we held. And in addition to us being an award-winning chapter, our prior presidents, who you heard from earlier, uh, Geraldine Yuri and Sherry Yuri Washington, as well as Alicia Malone, it was during their years that they were honored to be selected as presidents of the year. So we've had an opportunity to not only celebrate as a chapter, celebrate our presidents, but we also, as a chapter, won medium chapter of the year in addition to the awards I have previously mentioned. Thank you. And these are awards presented by the region? Yes, these are awards that we receive as part of our North Atlantic Regional Conferences that we attend. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you to our audience. It has been my pleasure to present and our, the pleasure of our chapter members to present our history for Epsilon Upsilon Omega Chapter and for the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Thank you for joining us. We hope you have learned from this and that it will inspire you in your work as we continue to perform service to all mankind. Thank you. Alrighty, well, that was a fantastic presentation. Um, we will now open the floor up to questions. So if anybody does have any questions, you can use the Q&A button or you can uh, type them in the chat. So let's see what we have here. I guess I'll start off. What inspired you to, to make the video? Andrew, I guess I'll take that question for you. Um, the video was inspired as a result of making contact with New Jersey uh, State Library. And because we are in this virtual environment, our first take was, should this be a Zoom event? And we thought that Zoom, although it's wonderful, we wanted something more than just a Zoom event. It's something that we want to be placed in history um, as part of our chapter memoir, as well as with the state of New Jersey, as well as those that will join after us and the legacy will continue as ladies of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. <laughs> There's a question in the chat. Um, a link to the children's book was mentioned in the discussion. Is that on the website? It currently is. Um, if you visit our website, I'm almost certain we have so much up there. So forgive me if I'm incorrect, but I'm almost certain that it is under our program uh, portion of our website. And if it's not under our website, it is definitely loaded on our Facebook page where you can find it as well. And uh, stay tuned for more as our uh, program chairman, uh, Tanya Stewart and her committee is working to provide additional uh, features of our members reading books that will be able to be shared with uh, students throughout Mercer County. Andrew, shall I ask uh, the, yeah, go ahead. the new one that just popped into Q&A? Sure. What are the qualifications and process of becoming a member? So to be a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, you have to be a college graduate and it's by invitation only. So we encourage you to visit our website as well as our corporate website for any additional information as it pertains to membership at the graduate level. For the undergraduate level, uh, if you have children attending uh, universities, or if uh, you are even as adults attending a university, that's where you would be able to find out additional information about the different chapters we have as undergraduate members. Um, the one chapter that we uh, oversee here in New Jersey is Ryder University. So Ryder University has information available about us on their website, or you can reach out to our chapter and we would put you in contact uh, with the um, chairman of our graduate uh, undergraduate program at Ryder University. Um, I love the hats. Do you have any hat fundraisers planned? Well, Thank you so very much. I have to tell you that our very own member, Darlene Mincy, who was on the line, is the person who is responsible for many of those hats that we had on in putting this documentary together. Um, and many of the hats that come from her were purchased at a previous event we did entitled Hattitude. So once the world opens back up, 
it may afford us the opportunity to be able to host Hattitude again. But at this time, because of the restrictions with COVID, uh, we have not been able to have any of our in-person programs as we have held in the past. We also have a lot of vendors at our Dr. Martin Luther King breakfast where you can purchase, we have at least two hat vendors at that event. So again, when we're back in, um, back in the live world where we have activities and events, uh, those are, uh, that's another event where we can purchase hats. And if I may, I had the wonderful pleasure of wearing Angela Dotson's mother's hat and I'm not exactly sure how old it was, but it was in excellent condition. It was absolutely beautiful. And I thank you, uh, Angela, for allowing me to showcase your mother's hat. Thank you. I mentioned that in the chat uh, that you wore one of my mother's hats. I believe that hat is as old as the 1950s, if not certainly the early 60s. And it was in excellent shape. So, you know, even the label did, did not look soiled or anything like that. I, she must have taken great care of it, and you looked wonderful in it. Thank you. Uh, what would you say is the, the most important legacy of the, the founding members, and how have you as a chapter, and maybe if you can speak to the the larger organization taken that legacy and what are your plans for using that in the future? So that I'm not talking solely, I'm going to defer to uh, Ms. Sherry Yuri Washington to answer that as she spoke, spoke so eloquently about our legacy and our uh, former presidents. I do believe one of the greatest um, one of the greatest things that the founders gave us was the legacy. It was the history and it was the foundation that it laid, which enables us not just Epsilon, Epsilon Omega, but all the chapters across the United States to be able to provide services to all mankind. It, we are a community service organization. We, it is important that we continue to be in touch with the community to, less the, to provide services to the less fortunate. And so, for to me, I think the most important thing that they left us was the legacy to provide services in the community, and um, and the legacy to continue into into the future of continuing to do that. So that's my. I think another another legacy is the whole legacy of leadership. I think that uh, leadership development is something that sets Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority apart from many other organizations. I think you can see that in the leadership, not only in our chapter at a local level, but also um, local, uh, regionally and nationally, such as our current uh, vice president, uh, Kamala Harris. Um, in addition, um, I'm sure uh, Kelly Griffin, she, she did a lot of uh, research on other famous um, Alpha Kappa Alpha women. And you will see that we are always at the top of any organization that we're a part of. So maybe uh, Kelly, if you can remind us of some more IKAs who are great leaders in not only just uh, locally, but uh, nationally as well. Sure, um, and before I mention any names, I just want to say about the legacy of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, I think uh, with our membership itself, um, we're, we've been here for 100, over 113 years and we, we have a very strong, robust membership that has lasted us over these years. And I think that's what helps. And what really drives it home is, you know, when we are initiated, we learn that it's not only for four years, but it's for life. This is a lifetime commitment. Um, so that is very important. So, so of course, I'll mention some of the names of uh, famous alpha women. First, I want to mention uh, one that was not mentioned in the documentary is our international president. Our international president, <clears throat> excuse me, Dr. Glenda Baskin Glover. She is our 30th international president, and she is actually the first female president of an HBCU, as well as president of the organization. So that's really, you know, a large accomplishment. 
And she also holds uh, one of two women in the world, her being one of them. She is a CPA, she's a JD, a PhD, all in one. I mean, she's just an amazing woman in her own right. And um, some of the famous AKAs that I didn't mention, um, I mentioned uh, Ava DuVernay, I mentioned um, Maya Angelou, Judy Smith. Uh, right here in New Jersey, we have quite a few. Um, C. Vivian Stringer, she was the coach for the Rutgers women's basketball team. We have um, the Honorable Tahisha Way, she's the New Jersey Secretary of State. We have the Honorable Linda Carter, she's a Congresswoman. Uh, honor the Honorable Bonnie Watson Coleman, she's a member of our chapter. Uh, you know, United States Congresswoman. So, you know, we could just go on and on and on about, you know, the famous women, but there, there are so many of us that are first in our own right. And that's what we learn as we are the first and finest. And we're also, while you're talking about the state of New Jersey, New Jersey Senator, State Senator Shirley Turner is also an Alpha Kappa Alpha and she was initiated in Epsilon Upsilon Omega. That's right. Thank you, Alicia. And can I add also, that uh, it's a legacy for our daughters as well. My daughter is a legacy and we have many uh, uh, sorority sisters that have daughters that become AKAs. And young women, black women look up to our sorority and we serve as mentors for our young black women. And I think that's one of the legacies that we will carry on forever in our sorority. Thank you. Andrew, if there are uh, no further questions, I have one that I would like to ask uh, our panelists if that's all right. Go ahead. Wonderful. Um, ladies, clearly this is a very, very historic chapter. Um, do you maintain records or an archive or anything of that nature that might help um, interested parties do research or find family members that they might not know about? I'm I'll glad answer you that. Asked. I was going to say, I'm <laughs> glad that you asked that, um, yes. Regina, because we have our historian, Darlene Mincy, that is on with us today who would be the best person to answer that question for us. Yes, that's very, very important. And we have been working for the past year in gathering information on all of our charter members and all of our past presidents. And it's been eye-opening and it's been a wonderful experience. And we have two volumes that we have collected that we're now in the process of reviewing and editing. And that will be for public information as soon as we complete that. And it's, yes, we do. We, and we have worked very, very hard to um, keep our legacy going by having a archives. And our archivist is working very hard to establish uh, that information. But yes, we do have it if anyone's interested, yes. Yeah, and Thank we you. should say that, that the historian and the archivist are standing offices in our sorority. Yes. Um, so, you know, we, we keep material year round all the time. Um, and uh, Darlene has upped our game by, by uh, trying to gather some of this information in a more organized way. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't see any other questions, but I'd like to to open this up to the any of the panelists. Is, is there anything else that you would like to share that maybe you wanted to expand upon from the presentation, or something that that wasn't included but you'd like to to present as well? Please, Andrew. If I may, um, oh, actually, I think we just received a question in the chat. Um, what, what are some, some of our upcoming up, events? Uh, mm -hmm. um, some of the upcoming events that we have coming up, actually on next Thursday, we will be in partnership with the ABWL, which is the American Black uh, Women Lawyers Association. 
and we will be discussing uh, wills and estates as they pertain to uh, individuals and their families. And that is an event that is open up to the uh, public. Um, during our summer months, we pretty much go on a hiatus to kind of refresh, restore, uh, rejuvenate, and uh, come up with some additional ideas to be able to present to our community. Um, our last event for the month of June will be our scholarship reception as we discussed during this documentary which uh, our Ivy League Educational Foundation will be hosting. And that gives us an opportunity to showcase uh, the students throughout Mercer County and the surrounding areas that have been awarded deserving scholarships to assist them as they go off to college, um, as well as recognizing those members, children in our chapter graduating. So we will uh, have that to take place on uh, June the 26th. And then um, August, we do have an event where we uh, have our International Day of Prayer and that is held in August. Then once we return in September, as I indicated to you, we will be hitting the ground running with our programs and our sisterly relation events, some of which will be open to the public, others that are just for members of our uh, sorority to participate in. But, all of our information will be posted again on our uh, chapter website, as well as our Facebook page, where uh, members uh, that are part of different chapters or even in the community would be able to find information out about all that we do. One of the things that I thought we wanted to, we wanted to mention when we talked about people coming together, sorority sisters coming to together for a good cause, it has to do with our HBCU initiatives. Uh, every year for the past three years on a given day, we have raised, Alpha Kappa Alpha women have raised over $1 million in one day earmarked for historically black colleges and university. So that in itself is an amazing feat. And with our current international president being the president of HBCU, she has made this an, an especially, uh, an, a special effort to do this. So. Again, I'm, I'm proud that we can come together once a year and raise over $1 million in one day just from our, our members and their family and friends to support HBCUs. All right. Um, somebody said, I see there's a documentary about AKA narrated by Felicia Rashad. Can you tell us more about that? Or Alicia, do you want to take that one? Sure, I'll take that one. It is on, um, I know it is on Xfinity Comcast. If you just do the search, I usually just um, hit the key where you can just talk into it. Uh, it's called 20 Pearls and it's a documentary um, just documenting Alpha Kappa Alpha throughout the years narrated by Felicia Rashad. Uh, it's a wonderful um, documentary. I would encourage anyone who has Xfinity and those who have, um, I don't, if those of you who are on here who don't have Xfinity, how do you access it from the other ones, from the other um, cable outlets? Because I'm not really sure. I was but I know that it's up all to, the time on Xfinity. I, I was able to download it from Vimeo. Mm. Okay. Uh, but I do believe there was a small fee to download it from Vimeo. Okay. The so, other place other than but I know on Xfinity, it's just, it's, it's archived. And so you can just go on there. It's kind of like on demand. You can just go on there and pull it up. So um, I would encourage you if you are still, if you are interested in just the general history, not just of Epsilon, Upsilon, Omega, but the history of Alpha Kappa Alpha to watch it. It's a fabulous documentary. It really is. We had another question in chat as well. Um, I know you mentioned the programs you do with the youth, hashtag CAP and other mentor programs. How are you keeping the youth interested and focused on your programming? Do you give awards and scholarships? A great question. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually have two youth programs. Hashtag CAP is our signature program under our current administration. And CAP stands for College Admission Process. And our focus is to help the high school students between uh, grades 9th through 12th uh, prepare for college. 
And we don't think that starting in the ninth grade is too young. So what we do is we offer programs throughout the year to help them start getting their minds in the right place as they think about exploring college and becoming educated uh, young men as well as women. So that high school program is open to uh, not just females, but also to males. And then we have our uh, Young Culture Pearl, YCP program, which is for students in grades uh, fifth through eighth. And it's almost us preparing them for what they need to look forward to as they prepare for high school and after high school college as well. So it's us being able to be mentors to young ladies, showing them uh, etiquette, showing them public speaking, showing them how to prepare to be the young ladies that we know they want to be and to be a part of this sorority as the first and finest women who have carried themselves with high ethical and moral standards. Uh, so those are the two programs that we have. And the way we've been keeping them engaged throughout this uh, pandemic is over Zoom, um, hosting not just educational pieces for them, but also giving them some entertainment. So during the holidays, engaging with them and uh, Christmas caroling and things of that nature, making ornaments, and also checking on their well being, even as young adults, uh, uh, mentally. So, offering them uh, mental health uh, tips and making sure they are well, even during this um, COVID season, and keeping in touch with them as well as their parents on how they are coping in this uh, environment and offering assistance in their uh, academics if need be as it relates to them uh, still making progress that we know they need to make as our future. And um, that's pretty much it. And if I may, I, I believe the other part of the question was, uh, do we give book awards and scholarships? Uh, book awards are giving out, given out by the chapter um, and scholarships are typically, book awards and scholarships are also given out by the foundation. And we do that as uh, Adrian mentioned, we do that once a year. Uh, this year we were very, very um, glad that we were able to continue. We actually gave out close to $11,000 in book awards slash scholarships to deserving area high school seniors graduating to both men and women. So um, that's always fabulous. Uh, one of the things that we are, that we do do as well is we have some members who'd like to give out scholarships in the name of family members. So that's also a way to give out and to reach out to the community. Um, there's a scholarship that is given in the name of uh, Betty Vaughn Cole. There's a scholarship given out in the name of Monica Weaver, who was a wonderful and faithful member of our organization. And our application is up on the actual foundation's website, which is the Ivy League Educational Foundation, and that's where you would find our scholarships. The scholarships were also distributed to all high schools and um, guidance counselors. They're also given out to churches, and it is just one more way to support the community. Uh, do you plan to host En Blanc in 2022? Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're hoping, fingers crossed, <laughs> and uh, things permitting, we are hoping to, we were prepared for 2021. We had a secret location already set aside and had already began our planning. So we do plan to continue offering that to the community and helping us to be able to raise funds so that we can support our local uh, high school students as Ms. Sherry Yuri Washington already indicated. That event helped us to do just that, allow for us to provide entertainment to our uh, community, but also in turn allows for us to be able to pour back into the community by providing scholarships. And if I may, we're also planning to do our Martin Luther King breakfast again. Uh, we are not sure if we are going to do it in person or if it will be virtual, if it'll be a combination, but you will be, you can find out more information on both website, but we are planning to do that again in 2022. 
May I also add in uh, March 2022, mm -hmm. the chapter will be celebrating our 70th, 70th anniversary. So please look on our website in the new year of the different activities that we'll be conducting in celebration of that 70th year. Thank you. And um, we will also have uh, our foundation will be 20 years young as well. So there will be a celebration celebrating the Ivy League Educational Foundation. So we're going to have a great 2022. And we have another question in the chat. Uh, I know in the video it was said that you partnered with the ABL for some workshops. Do you do other partnerships with other organizations? We do. Um, we have our program chairman on the line with us. So I'll mention a few and then I'll just have her chime in uh, for any ones that I may forget, but uh, we recently, this year, uh, began in January, we partner, as we do yearly, with the uh, Brothers of Phi Beta Sigma, another uh, fraternity, and we host an annual, um, under our health and wellness, we host AKA Pink Goes Red initiative, where it deals with a uh, healthy heart. And that opportunity afforded us of the opportunity to be able to partner with Trenton Health Team this year, uh, Rutgers University, Henry J. Austin, where we hosted a, a panel discussion to discuss the effects of this pandemic, to talk about the different uh, vaccinations and the importance of wearing masks. So we did that in January. Uh, we've also in the past, we've had an opportunity to partner with the brothers of Omega Sci Fi uh, and hosting our uh, Designer Bag Bingo event that we do yearly. And we've also partnered with the Brothers of Kappa Alpha Psi, which in past years we've held uh, cabaret events together. And uh, some of the other local organizations that we partner with, Village Charter School, which is one of the schools that we adopt each year. We partner with uh, Trenton uh, Housing Authority to host our uh, Breakfast with Santa. And we've also partnered with uh, local um, schools throughout, throughout uh, the Trenton area to host our uh, Breakfast with Santa event. And I cannot forget our Trenton African American Fires Association who have partnered with us yearly to host our Breakfast with Santa in addition of us partnering with them to do uh, our trunk or treat activity for the students and uh, community here in the city of Trenton. And Tanya, I'm sure I probably forgot some others because as I think about uh, just one other thing, when uh, Ms. Sherry was talking about MLK, some of our partnerships there are New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Company, St. Francis uh, Medical Center, um, uh, the African American Chamber of Commerce, and also we have some uh, local partnerships and uh, the Ross family who also serve as one of our sponsors for our breakfast. So we try to continue building partnerships. We have many, as you heard me say, and Tanya, I don't know if there are any more that you want to add on there, but we're looking um, as we continue to have a presence in the community to build upon those relationships with local organizations, as well as other fraternities and sororities. Because we know that as we come together, the more hands on deck, the more work we can do in giving back and being of service to all mankind. Andrew, I don't see any more uh, Q&A or, um, or anything um, in the chat that needs to be addressed. Yeah. Uh, I would really like to thank our panelists. Thank you so much. Um, it's awesome to have a group of powerful and inspiring women to come and speak to our audience and to help us to celebrate the Juneteenth holiday. Um, Panelists, if 
if you would like to say anything in closing, please, please, please go ahead. It was an honor to have you here today and thank you so much. Thank you so much, Regina. I will defer to my other sorority sisters and then I will give the last word just if anyone else has anything that they want to add or, or share with our community guests and other sorority sisters. Well, just, just, to to, uh, thank, just to thank the library for having us and for presenting this uh, to this audience and, and thanks to all the audience that took the time to listen to us. Um, we're always happy to share information about Alpha Kappa Alpha, but to have an audience that was enthusiastic and interested was really great. Thank you. Certainly enjoyed it. Uh, again, I want to thank the library for um, sharing with us and, and asking us to be a part of your Juneteenth celebration. It's very important to us as well as the community. So we do appreciate it. And to check out our website, epsilonupsilonomega.org. We have a lot of programs and we provide a lot of service to the community. And I am a very proud member of this chapter. So thank you. And I too would like to thank the um the State Library. And thank you, Regina, for reaching out to me so that I could reach out to my chapter um, so that we could put together this presentation. It was a lot of fun and um, very informative. And uh, so thank, you, thank everyone who took the time out to listen. Yes, I'd like to thank everyone. I'd like to thank the library as well. I'm sorry, the museum as well. And I just want to say that you know, I've been a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha for 40 years. And one of the things uh, Regina, that you talked about is preserving the history. And I just think that is so important. And one of the things that um, your request and, and this partnership actually did, it, it made us look at and actually put to paper something that we've been trying to do for all these years. So I thank you for um, giving us the opportunity to come together to record our history and to document all the wonderful things and under all the wonderful works that we have done. Okay. I just want to say to Regina and to Andrew, both of you have been awesome. I thank you so much for thinking of us, taking the time to work with us, taking the time to uh, review this information and to our guests, thank you. I know that many of you are working, although we're in this virtual environment, taking time out of your schedule to take part in this documentary that we put together. Thank you to our members, thank you. And to the awesome uh, members of our chapter who put this documentary, documentary together, it was a fun time to be able to, one, just be able to come back together during this time of COVID, not seeing so many of us in over a year. And to our awesome uh, moderator, Angela Dawson, who did not mention, but she's an author herself. So she kept us calm. She kept us together. And I appreciate all that she did. And last but not least, the, what you saw today could not be possible without Maurice Collins. So a uh, shout out to Collins Media for doing a job well done. And we came to him as the first and finest telling him we were looking for our first and finest production and he did just that. So I just want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to view it. Uh, it will also be up on YouTube and on our website for uh, viewings in the future and as I started out by saying when I did my introduction, I would just like to end by saying, as we celebrate Juneteenth, let us reflect upon our roots and our history and let it not be a day off, but a day on to be of service to all mankind. Thank you. <laughs>